base our community forum questions off of. And the community forum will consist of the police department, um, the board of education, youth services, and then the task force. And that pretty much is everything. I'll have more next time after we meet again. And also April, there is a, on racial equity, there is a seminar tomorrow from two to four oh, yes. that CCM is sponsored. And we did make that available to the selectmen to also participate if they're available. Good, yes, I, I am actually registered for that, awesome. Very good, and I know some of our other selectmen are as well. Yes, Thank you. yes, they had a very interesting um, training today on affordable housing through CCM that I attended to. Yes. And we'll start bringing that, that up that a little bit. Very interesting. Yes. Thank you for your report. Thank you. The next item we have on our agenda is a discussion item. Um, and it's a request by one of our water customers for payment relief from his water sewer bill. And I'll ask Nick if Mr. Jarzebek is on the, on the uh, Zoom call with us. Okay. Um, I'll bring the attention to the selectmen to an email that was sent to you. And it has, it's in the Water and Sewer Commission minutes of November 2. I would ask that you review that. I will paraphrase it so that you're apprised of what the topic is. Mr. Jarzebek of 216 Summer Street requested relief from the sewer portion of his bill. He offered information to the members of the Water and Sewer Commission on his current bill and its usage. Mr. Jarzebek stated that since the proration, it resulted, I'm not sure if this is written exactly correctly, um, it resulted in an additional $800 due to his irrigation system. What he's saying is that his bill was not prorated based on previous usage by, by the sewer so that he was paying the full amount of the water based on the water that he was utilizing. And in the summertime, he's utilizing water for irrigation purposes, not only um, it within the house. So he is saying that because we did away with that proration, his bill was larger than it had been previously. Um, we did have a discussion on this when we looked at the bills and the rates and how we were going to be charging people. And um, it was decided that we would no longer continue with that proration. Um, I'll continue that Mr. Jarzebek said that since the water was used for irrigation and it did not go down into the sewer system, he was requesting a refund. He stated that in the future, he's requesting that we put in a second meter solely for his irrigation system. The chairman of the committee advised Mr. Jarzebek that they would discuss his request further and that he would be notified of any decisions to be made. And what they determined was that they would send it to the Board of Selectmen for our review because the amount exceeds the amount that they typically are able to give relief for. And I think they felt that it had to do more with rates. So they did bring it to our attention. Um, in addition, I shared with the selectmen information from Mr. Jarzebek in terms of his usage. And I would like um, to open it up if there's any questions on this. Um, perhaps Mr. Jarzebek wasn't available tonight and we can certainly put this on another meeting to discuss. Any comments? Um, yeah, Susan, this is Jim. I'll, I'll say I did um, take a look and dig into some of the numbers on this, and you can definitely see it's it's interesting. Um, I think a few there are a few factors driving this, and, and one of them is the fact that because we had that situation with some delayed uh, meter reading, we ended up uh, reading an extra three weeks worth of um, usage into that into that uh, third quarter, it will be the third quarter of the year, of the calendar year. Uh, and that definitely had an impact. Um, also looking at it, you can definitely see, and I think if, if when you look at the proration, right, what that's looking at is that 
1,407 uh, cubic feet were used in the second quarter. And then the usage was showing over 15,000 cubic feet in the third quarter. Um, so, so it's a huge jump. The previous year, um, that third quarter usage was like 9,000 cubic feet. So th there was a huge year over year increase. And I don't know if that's, you know, it could simply be the fact that we had kind of an, un you know, it's really two factors, right? We had a very hot, unusual summer, um, a drought summer, and we had a, um, the extra three weeks of usage, which accounts to about 23%, 23.1%. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there as additional, um, so just some additional information based on looking at the, the numbers that were provided. Thank you, sir. So Jim, yes, you're saying that the at 15,172 number, I don't know, is that gallons or is that cubic meters? I, I believe I believe that's in cubic feet. Um, or cubic feet. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. anyway, that if it was 13 weeks instead of 16 weeks, you would reduce that number by 23%? Yeah, it to... basically it would you know, like the, the, what would I would refer to as like the normalized usage for that third quarter would be 12,334 gallons or thereabouts if I did my math correctly. Um, okay. I'm, I'm not sure depending on what we're looking at, right? Obviously there's the, the change in this was done for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, we are, we do have a large deficit. Um, it also, the, you know, the proration creates as many billing issues as it tries to solve, right? Because you, you take a look at if, for example, if an individual is adding pool uh, water to their pool in the second quarter, um, there's no proration associated with that, right? So it's, you've got these sort of these, these different, um, these different impacts that are associated with it. And, and it creates, like I said, it, 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 I'm not sure that it's just kind of a tough situation. Billing with usage is, is tough to try to get an idea. And especially where I think part of the things, one of the things that's been impacting us in terms of trying to balance a budget and, and understand what revenue is gonna come in is when you look at usage, um, you never will know and can really never know what the what the second quarter versus third quarter usage is going to look like. It's always going to be, you know, uh, um, an issue. And the problem is, if you start trying to guess the other way, you end up raising rates up dramatically um, more than you would want to. So it, it's definitely, um, um, you know, it's a, it's a difficult situation. I do think, and, and going back and looking at it, um, it is an issue that was discussed and it was properly noticed. I think, which is important. Um, in terms of how this was done. Okay. I also think we have to be careful and that we don't set precedent. I mean, this, we, we have what, um, you know, a couple thousand water customers and maybe 15, 1600 sewer customers. Um, many of them could have a similar situation. Um, where they're using more water in the summer for watering or pools or whatever. Um, uh, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm kind of. I'm kind of sort of siding with you, Jim. That we have to. You know, to me, water and sewer really they almost should be one. They're they're even though they're separate budgets, they're really one. And um, we. We've been running at a deficit for so long that uh, I, I, I don't see um, uh, I don't see a, a whole bunch, a lot of wiggle room here to me. But but um, I, I think we'll have to study the matter and you know kind of sleep on it and dig down a little bit. But um, that's my initial thoughts on it. And I think especially as we go forward as a, um, as a subcommittee, as we're looking at this, um, a good topic is gonna to be, is, is there a, a better, you know, is there a, 
is there a better mechanism or a, a different methodology? Or I, I mean, I just think it's it's always good to be considering that anyway um, in the situation we're in. But I I do think that there's a certain amount of consistency here. Um, Jeff, yeah, with, with can I ask you a question? I'm sorry. What? When when is your subcommittee planning to meet again? Um, we can meet again. Uh, we could meet again in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, in the beginning part of December, we didn't meet um, in the back half. We normally meet towards the back half of the month, just because of some of the help, the difficulty in scheduling. And we didn't this month in November because of um, Thanksgiving. But we certainly could meet um, in the beginning part of December here. It's I guess at that time of year where it's a little bit easier. Would your committee be willing to take a look at this, uh, or at least uh, put some thoughts together? I, I would say I would say that I would believe absolutely. Okay, that that would be helpful yeah. since I think um, you've certainly studied this thoroughly. Um, be interesting to hear your thoughts on this. So that subcommittee is you and Rick and I believe Ralph. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So yeah. once uh, you're able to review, perhaps you can give me more information, and then we'll proceed to talk some more as needed. And what, what we can do, uh, Susan, is, is plan to, um, we, can, we can talk, you know, I can circle back with, with, um, with Rick and Ralph after, after the meeting and we can get something on the books so that it will be prior to our next Board of Selectmen meeting. Well, we meet in two weeks, so you may want to make it the financial meeting in January. Um, sure. I don't, I'm just not certain you'd be able to meet before our next meeting, but certainly if you can, just let me know and I'll be happy to put it on the agenda. Okay, will do. Okay, thank you. Anybody else on that topic? Susan, I just had one question for Jim as well and the committee. Um, what do other towns do? And maybe that's just something that uh, you may have looked into already uh, and when you've discussed it before. Uh, but I'm just wondering if there's a, a better way to evaluate uh, usage or the way you're doing it is the best way possible within the community. There are different mechanisms um, without going into specific towns, but I mean, there, there's different mechanisms that you could use, right? You could use one, sometimes do it exactly the way we're now doing it. Um, and, and, and that's just kind of, the, and that's just the way it is. And, and folks understand the rules here. I mean, part of this is obviously because this is a recent change. Uh, so folks get used to one way of operating and then it becomes a, you know, it, it's like, oh, okay. And, and they notice what the, there's a difference. Um, there are some, you know, I, I've, there are some folks that do this as um, a flat fee. Um, I don't think that that would be at all helpful you know, in my right to, for example, to our folks, especially our retired folks, I think we have to be very careful about whatever we do and try to try to keep as much balance as we can in the system. Um, you know, others, other uh, uh, entities will will do it as a um, something that's based on property values. And, you, you know, it, there are different mechanisms that you can you can do that get you away from usage. It's just not where we've been um, and, and how we've done it. Uh, the way it works right now with the proration is if they look at, for any reason, right, if they look at your third quarter usage and they see that it's higher than the second quarter usage, they charge the second quarter usage. That could be because you have a water system. That could be because you put water in a pool. It could be that you've got, you know, two teenagers home from college and they're, they're taking hour long showers. Um, there's a lot of different th ways that usage can, can get driven. So that was one of the problems here is the profile is that it takes a, like one, it takes a look at one quarter without taking to look at there can be different usage profiles and different reasons for it, which means you end up shifting cost in different ways. But there are different things that we can talk about. Thank you, Jim. Very welcome. Thank you very much. So we'll look forward to hearing back from you. Um, Jim, and I appreciate your committee's work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have our finance director with us tonight, uh, Mr. Robinson. And as is 
typical. Annually, we have a fourth quarter transfer request, and I'll turn it to you, Tom, for an explanation. Hello. Um, yeah, this year, um, more or less due to the COVID situation, we had less overages in, in various departments. We were able to, one, we held cost lines as we knew there were some revenue shortfalls uh, that we had to try to mitigate. Um, but the uh, revenue was here, that or the expenses here that uh, went over budget. It was in a positive manner. Actually, it was a police private duty uh, due to the many projects that were going on. Um, uh, the, you know, some of the bridge work, I think there's some work on 66. There's this, some projects that were going on. We had more revenue as well as expenditures, therefore causing the whole department to go over budget um, in, in that manner. So we're uh, requesting $50,000 to be taken from the contingency to go into the police private duty or, uh, line item um, to make the global police budget uh, positive. And I, I want to point out that um, the police private duty is paid for by private contractors. So while, um, as Tom pointed out, we have to make that transfer, the expenditure is paid for by revenue that typically exceeds the expenditure. So just to clarify that, I don't want um, our listeners to think that we overspent within the police budget due to um, ordinary expenditures. It has to do only with the police providing private duty to things such as bridge, Aragoni bridge work, um, um, Eversource requires police to give them traffic control, as well as other construction projects that may be going on throughout the town. So we what we ask we is for you to review the resolution that was sent to you by email. And if someone would like to read that, we'll entertain a motion to that effect. Sure, so I'll, I'll make a motion um, that we adopt the resolution um, titled fourth quarter transfers dated December 2, 2020, uh, resolved that the Board of Selectmen hereby approves the below fiscal year 2019-2020 year-end general government transfers. Uh, in summary, uh, moving $50,000 from contingency into the police private duty budget. Are you making that, that uh, yes. moving that resolution, Jim? Yes, that's a yeah, motion. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Rick Shar. Any questions, discussion? I think it's pretty clear what we're doing here. All in favor, aye. 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 Is there any opposition or abstention tonight? Motion passes, thank you. The next item is the monthly budget report. And I'm just asking Tom to give a few highlights. He indicated to me that there aren't too many um, new items from last month, but I did email it to you today so that you'll have it for further review but I asked Tom to prepare a short uh, statement on any changes or highlights he may have. Tom? Yeah, so uh, this, you know, it's a, this is a uh, short month to get this report out. So we were able to get uh, money of the entries in today, um, you know, to try to get this report out to you. So we were able to get the report out. Um, again, the areas that, that you see, you see the police private duty, having stronger revenues as well as higher expenses. Um, so that we'll have to watch that number and you know, throughout the, the year as we're getting you know, close to the budget number already and expense. And obviously re re revenues will come in. Revenues always come in slightly delayed mm -hmm. as the billings, um, as they get billed. And then also the, the company has to get paid from generally their project source, which is usually the state of Connecticut so they have to go through, get their money back, and then remit to us. Um, so sometimes you see a little difference in the revenue to the expense until that revenue catches up. Um, so th those are the areas, uh, the bigger, those are the, really the area that, that stuck out to me. Um, we will, uh, you know, keep watching um, the activity there. If you have any questions on any of the activity, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, and uh, let me know, and we'll uh, we'll look at that. 
I know last um, month I, Rick had asked me about the, um, it was the police department and it was also at one point company two firehouse. I did order an appraisal of that property. So when I receive that, I'll be sharing that with the selectmen. Okay. Um, Rick? Yeah, you, well, you beat me to the punch on that one. That's good. That's good news. Um, Tom, on the um, rental property, which I assume is mostly the water park. Uh, it's um, water park and it's uh, the, uh, it's Oak Hill. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Um, anyway, how do you feel that's coming in? I mean, it looks like you've, we've taken in 280,000 out of a 361,000, budget yeah i mean it, it was it, it, you know there was improvements there it was stronger than we initially anticipated uh so that's that's a positive um the you know oak hill is paid consistently so that's also positive um the um, you know so I, you know it's a positive we have to watch how the remainder of the year goes with them but uh definitely how about is the is how current is the water park because I know they've had, it's probably been a tough year for them. Water Park is very current. They're okay, very good. Current. Yeah. All right. I didn't want to let you go without at least one question. Thank no, you, no. Rick. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Actually, yeah, you know, Brownstone did better than I had anticipated they would do. So we were pleased to see that their revenue, while it's not what it was in their peak years, it still is uh, respectable. And it certainly was a good estimate that you made when you put forward the budget last time. Um, we will not, we don't show, of course, the monies that we hope will come in for May and June. Keep our fingers crossed that the vaccinations start to work and we have more people that are able to be in the park. They had a good July in that they were open every day at a reduced capacity. But then in August, um, you may remember, we had some very severe weather with that Isaesis or that storm that came through. And there were also some credits that had to be given to uh, customers because they weren't able to utilize some of the monies that they had reserved. So all in all, I think it was a decent return. I'm very pleased and uh, we look forward to uh, the spring. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on. Are there any appointments to boards and commissions tonight? Um, you know, I, I have, um, I think one potentially, um, I believe that the uh, plan of conservation and development implementation committee um, voted to, um, because they would like to see Frank Winiski moved from an, an alternate position to a full time. That's correct. Um, and I think that's something obviously that we need to do here. So if, if um, I mean, I can either do it tonight or I can do it in two weeks, but if, if folks are okay, I would just make a motion that we appoint um, Frank Winiski to a full time position for the Plan of Conservation and Development Implementation Committee, uh, which would be moving him from an alternate position into a full time position. Is there a second to that nomination? I'll, I'll second that, Ralph. Seconded by Ralph. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Jim. The next item is refunds of excess payments. All right, I'll make a motion that we refund the amounts amount of, so of 68, I mean, of $6.38 and $16.48 to Salma Enterprises, LLC. Second it. Seconded by Ralph. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstentions? Motion carries. And I'll make a motion that we refund the amount of $253.38 to Enterprise FM Trust. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Ralph. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Status reports?
I don't have any. I was not able to make the Board of Education meeting last night. Um, I know Ralph was able to. I don't know if there's anything from there, but um, I think everything was pretty much what we've expected and what we've been hearing about COVID cases. But unfortunately, I had a family commitment. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'll just make a couple of points because I was kind of doing work at the same time. So I don't want to misquote, but they certainly have an, a few additional cases. But um, there is going to be a meeting uh, next week to um, make a decision. And so the intent was to work through this week remotely and next week remotely. So uh, the intent is for the reopening committee to meet next week and then the board of ed to have a special meeting to make a decision how they proceed after those two weeks of being remote, whether they go back to being in class or not. So that'll be a decision that they will make. Um, next week, the end of next week, I believe. Ralph, is, are all the schools remote right now? Yes, they decided, be, well, because the cases were up and there was a concern about what happens with Thanksgiving, they, they decided, and, and, and the superintendent was getting nervous about how many, how much faculty he had. That's probably the bigger concern is, you know, as they come out, you have trouble being able to be able to run the classes. So. Um, he thought it was best to shift. He got the support of the Board of Ed uh, to, to agree with it that they would just do remotely two weeks and then reevaluate where the situation is at that toward the end of those two weeks, which would make it the end of next week. As I understand it, Rick, the staff are in their classrooms. Yeah. The students are learning remotely. And the superintendent and uh, the director of pupil services has done a survey to determine additional needs that families may have. And they are, they are doing their best to meet the needs that are presented, whether they're academic or social. And uh, I think they're doing a really good job on that. And I wanna compliment our schools for remembering that we're not all the same and the needs may vary, particularly during these difficult times. So I do wanna thank Dr. Britton for his work. I know he's gonna be doing a podcast with Dave Kosminski tomorrow and you'll be able to hear that probably over the weekend. So you could probably get um, some additional information. So check our website on Friday for the podcast to get the most up-to-date information from Charles, I think uh, they're very valuable and, and worthwhile to listen to those podcasts. Um, I wanted to give a little update on our collector of revenue office. Uh, Nancy DiGirolamo this week has announced that she will be retiring in February. And Nancy has done an excellent job being our collector of revenue for uh, many years. She's been in the office 14 years. She had worked under Janet Lynch and when Janet retired, Nancy had taken the position of collector of revenue. So that position is open. Um, I announce it tonight to thank Ms. DiGirolamo for her many years of service. Um, she's had very good results as far as collecting of revenue and maintaining our accounts. And she should be commended for that. And I thank you, Nancy, for all of your work. Uh, the assistant in that um, office had been there not, not as long, just a couple years, um, but she also moved to another job in Haddam where she lives and she had also worked there previously. So please be aware that we will be interviewing and if anyone is interested in the position to please direct it to my office and uh, we'll take a careful review. But thank you to our employees. Um, they really do excellent work and we're gonna miss Nancy in particular because of the many years of service that she's had. So thank you. Any other status reports? <coughs> the next item is public comment, Nick. Can you hear Nick? Can you guys hear me? Nope, can you call the name of the yeah. person? Dave Murphy from Carousel Drive. David Murphy, go ahead. He needs, no, he's on mute. Hey, can you hear me? Good evening. Yes. Just go a couple ahead. quick comments. Um, Cause the, uh, the shooting incident or shooting range stuff was brought up earlier. I wanted to reiterate that 
since I live on Carousel Drive, that I have also heard that. Um, and some of my neighbors, and we do also, because we even live closer to the old drive-in, that it is coming from there in some aspects. I don't know if it's a, you know, just, you know, they're just going there, just having some fun, shooting, whatever. And, you know, also a comment that not only is it a nuisance noise, but it also impacts pets. For anybody that has a dog that's afraid of fireworks or, or, or guns, that kind of scares the you know what out of them. So just making that comment. The other thing is just an observation and this might be quirky, but when I drive over the bridge, cause you guys mentioned the, the, the private duty, I noticed that our police are always sitting, our police cars are always the brand new ones sitting there running for eight, nine hours a day. But yet you go to the Middletown side and they're usually got an old Crown Victoria sitting there. Uh, and you know, only because I know every year we seem to add two or three police cars that you know, are, why are we using the new vehicles to sit there on private duty when we should probably be using an old vehicle? Um, just as a taxpayer, that would be a concern of mine. Um, and lastly, just a reminder for anyone that that is interested, which I would hope all of us are, is that they're continuing the public hearing tomorrow night at the Planning and Zoning Commission on that proposed 90,000 square foot, um, 150,000 ton salt pile behind the DRVN Enterprises off of um, Gospel Lane here. So I know there's a lot of questions that weren't answered on the last meeting, so they're continuing it. So hopefully a lot of those get answered, but uh, the feeling is by most people that, not most people, that some people that if, if, if they meet the rules that it's gonna go forward. So I, I don't know if that's the way it should go. I mean, I mean I'm, you know, some of us had questions about the noise. Some of us had questions about the, environment, some had questions about it being on an aquifer. Um, and even my kind of an oddball kind of observation was is that although it's DRV and enter enterprises, he set this up as an LLC, which means limited liability. So that means if, if there's ever a major issue, they can just declare bankruptcy and walk away. And I've had that experience in my past. So if, if they're so confident on this, why would it be set up as an LLC? Um, just just something there, I'm gonna bring that up tomorrow night that you know, either they need to have a bond or some kind of insurance, I would suspect. Um, so we're covered in that aspect. That's it, thank you. Appreciate thank you, it, Mr. Man. Murphy. Any other public comment, Nick? No other public comment, thank you. Uh, Board of Selectmen, informal discussion. Are there any items for review tonight? Okay. Um, there being none, is oh, there a motion? I have a question. Yes. Susan. Um, yes, certainly. Um, where, are we, where are we at um, on the uh, land swap with the exchange club? Uh, our attorney returned the documents to me and I sent them to the attorney for the exchange club. And I did send an email to the attorney for the exchange club yesterday, and I haven't heard back from that person yet. Okay. So all Thanks. the documents are ready. They just need, because it's a swap, Rick, the um, quit claim has to come and be signed by the exchange club. And it also has to be signed by the town because there's land being conveyed to one and the yeah, other. Yeah, both ways. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So if you okay. could uh, um, mention that perhaps, I know you as well as I are members and so is um, Ralph, just to let them know. If there's any question, we're happy to answer it and hopefully that will be done by the time we meet again. Just okay, I'll, filed. yeah, I'll, um, maybe I'll mention it to Jim Hill and just see what's going on. Okay, that'd it. be good. Okay. Yeah, we're happy to help if there's a question. So. Yep. All right. All right. If there's, if, okay. There is another public comment and I will um, ask for the name, Nick. Oh, thank you. M Mr. Van Devender, Brian. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, I was the one who actually sent that email over the weekend. Um, and so this, these comments are around the, uh, the, the noise coming from the gun range. Um, just to give some context, I live less than a hundred yards from that, um, 
from that gun range that was built. And, and my issue is not necessarily that they, they built the gun range. It is the fact that the noise coming out of there um, is at such a decibel level that I can continually hear every single shot in my house. And so I ask you guys, you know, if you had a car alarm going off next to your house for four hours a day on the weekends, what would you do, right? My kids are afraid to go outside. I've got three kids. They will not go outside, especially to that side of the house when they're out there shooting. I've yelled over trying to get the man's attention. They've got headphones on. They can't even hear me. They have no clue about the sound that they're making. Um, you know, based off the zoning rules, our noise levels should be at the highest at 70. Um, I think I'm in a, a zone that should be at 66 because I'm technically not residential. We do live on, you know, I do have four acres of land. He's got, I think, four or five acres of land, but his gun range is directly parallel to my house. And it goes right through the woods and echoes onto my house. So, you know, my, my biggest concern is when are we and how are we going to enforce our noise level, noise, noise ordinance? Um, and that, you know, gun, gun shooting is, has an average decibel rating of anywhere between 140 and 165. And our levels should be at 70. So I've got no concerns with the hunting that goes on around. You hear shot, shot every once in a while. But when you're dealing with three to four hours of nonstop shooting, take that in consideration if that was happening right next door to you. And the people who are walking by that street are afraid. You've got kids who are going on quads, whether or not it's legal or not, through the power lines. He's shooting into the power lines. So just think about what happened when a bullet misses. And then finally, I leave one last, one last comment, which is, you know, I'm, I'm actually trying to get a pool installed the permits I need to get for that are ridiculous. You know, I've got to go through, not ridiculous, but I've got to go through a process to be able to build and put in a pool. There's no requirement for anybody in this town to have to get a permit to be able to build a gun range. How do we know it's safe? How do we know that, that it's not, get, no bullet is going to get through that? How do I know what direction they're shooting in? Those are the things I ask you to look at when you're looking at that ordinance and how do we, how do we solve this problem? Because I'm not the only one. And back to somebody mentioned dogs. My neighbor's got two twin boys that have got autism. Think about what it's like for them to have to listen to gunshots nonstop. He's literally right next door to me. He is right behind me. He's, he's another 50 yards away. So that, that's, that's it. I leave it with that. I ask you guys as you look at those ordinances to think about what it's doing to our community. And um, back to, I've got no issues with guns. I don't mind if he's going out there shooting but keep it underneath the noise level. And we should be looking at the amount of time that we allow people to, to shoot nonstop. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Van Devender. Any other comments? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion to adjourn. Thank you, Jim. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Good night. It is 827. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.